Hey there, welcome to The Drawing Codex. One of the most exciting things about being an artist and also about aspiring to be an amazing artist is the idea of taking the things in our imagination and making them real. Taking the stories and scenes and ideas and translating them onto the page. This is often where we talk about drawing scenes or drawing these complete images that have both characters and backgrounds and environments and feelings, effects going on in them, a living, breathing world. Now, I want to do a series of videos on the Drawing Codex channel about this, but before we dive too deep in, I want to talk about the most important thing you can do from a practical standpoint as an artist who's aspiring to do this. It's one thing to understand the theory behind making complicated images, things like foreground, middle round, background, overlapping shapes, atmospheric perspective, composition, etc, etc. The question is how do you get there? That's what I want to talk about in this video and I'm going to do a simple drawing lesson where we focus on one thing. What do you do to start out on your journey to creating living, breathing scenes with your art? Let's jump in, get started. All right, welcome again to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years and on this channel we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. If you want to learn more about line and color illustration, you can check out my free quick start guide. It goes over my basic tips for getting up and running quickly in Photoshop with a simple, reliable process in the line and color style. It's free. The link will be in the description. All right, so what we're going to be doing is essentially combining the building blocks of a scene, which is some sense of narrative or some sense of an idea that's going to draw the viewer in. And I think if you're coming at this from an environment first standpoint, as in you started out drawing environments, then we can still use the same basic idea. But I think a lot of people probably who are listening to this started out drawing characters first and what you're aiming to do is to then be able to draw environments around them or to place them in an environment. Either way, the same concept exists. What we want to do is figure out how to get there, how to sort of take that first step. And essentially what it involves is just dealing with the simplest version of a scene that we can come up with. And for me, that is a character plus a small environmental element or a, even a character plus a prop. So what we want to do in this exercise and what I think is a really good thing for you to do is just to start doing this. Start placing your characters um, as if they're interacting with something. And it's this process of practicing to place a character in a scene and think about how they're relating to something that sends you off on the journey of being able to increase the complexity of that relationship, let's say, between the character and where they are. Now, there's a lot of different elements that go into this, as I said, and I will make a larger series that deals with all those elements. Those would be compositional elements, perspective elements. We have a large range of visual library challenges frequently that you have to deal with when you're drawing scenes. If you need to draw a forest, you need to know how to draw trees, leaves, etc., etc. If you're trying to draw a science fiction environment, you need to understand how corridors and houses might look in a particular uh, time and place, etc., etc. That's where we deal with, you know, the what, right? The visual library. What are we actually drawing? But there's also a process standpoint that can be quite challenging, which is how do I make something on a page that doesn't look terrible when I don't have all of those theoretical concepts sorted yet? If you don't know your perspective, if you, if you don't have good composition, what happens is when you try and draw a big scene, which is often what we have in our head, nothing's working. And the problem is even if one thing is not working, then the image probably won't turn out well. If your perspective is just not quite solid enough to tackle a particular idea and you try and do it, it probably won't turn out very well, even if all the other stuff is working. So the fundamental concept here is to limit our variables, which is a very simple scientific concept. But I think it's really important. 
We want to limit the variables, control the variables, and give ourselves a simple little task that allows us to practice while still having a good chance to actually create something that looks nice. Anyway, let's jump over to the drawing table because I've got some more reference and ideas that we can talk through there. All right, here we are at the drawing table. Now I want to share with you the basic idea for what this exercise or lesson is going to be about. And that is essentially that we're just going to take the idea of a character that we're going to draw and we're going to apply that character plus one additional element and try and create something interesting out of that, which is its own challenge. But all I'll say is if you can't make that interesting, adding stuff to it is unlikely to help and magically make everything better. So just keep that in mind. Um, if we have a character that we're drawing and we're going to add something to that. And this could be an object. It could be a prop or part of a scene. Right. Uh, or environment. And that really is all we're doing. We're just sort of making a simple image. Now, some good examples of this are often what I would do when I was doing little character designs to help sell the idea. And this is something that, again, I progressed through with my own career and, and, and actually used a very similar technique to this to, to build up to my ability to actually draw complicated scenes and things. So if you go look at my art station, you can see I, I've actually become fairly known for being able to do concept art and comics where we have complicated designs that I've actually designed for a client and environments that I've designed for a client, but I'm putting them all together in illustrations so that we can see the world sort of happening before the game actually gets made. This is something that's actually quite common in comics but in concept art, people tend to focus on characters or environments and really go deep into those particular um, tasks. And they tend to sort of focus on one or the other. So I, I've actually sort of built a little bit of a career being able to do both of these things. And it, it's actually something that if you talk to a lot of people as their career progresses, everyone kind of aspires to do this, to be able to create the entire scene. One of the ways that I started doing that for myself was just by doing little scenes like this, where we would take essentially the character and place them in a very, very basic environment or give them a prop. In most cases, I was just using exactly the same thing again and again, which is a, a little sort of cheat. Almost, a, It's almost a joke to a certain degree where I just sort of put them on a rock or something. But this is, I think, a really good way to think about the challenge is that one of the things, there's many things we're doing when we're trying to think about drawing scenes and, and complicated uh, compositions and illustrations. And a lot of those are about directing the eye, using composition, thinking about foreground, middle ground, background, etc., etc., but you can actually experiment with many of these ideas at a very, very basic level. So if we take a simple illustration like this, which I think would technically be classed as a vignette style illustration. And I think that word comes from an older sort of time of illustration. It probably has a different type of meaning, but it essentially means that we have a character that or, or like a, a subject or an illustration that you can kind of plonk down on any type of background. So we sort of have an object, right, and the character, but it's it's not to a full frame. It's kind of cut out. And that's like, uh, again, a particular type of illustration that is often done. Uh, you could often use it for spot illustrations in an illustration uh, in, in a book or something like that. But either way, you can still experiment and do these in a good way or a bad way, so to speak. You can apply the concepts of composition. You can think about eye flow. You can think about placement. You can think about 
movement, about gesture, and about the concept of foreground, middle ground, background. A lot of foreground, middle ground, background is really just about making sure that there's depth in the scene. If we think about that from a very basic level, often we sort of have a right a foreground object and then we have a sort of middle ground object and then we might have again our sort of background object and this this is just something that tends to get kind of formalized as part of picture making but really it is just a way to understand and make sure you have enough of these elements within the frame to kind of give a good sense of overlap. Obviously not every illustration has foreground, background, middle ground, etc. What we're really talking about here is depth, making sure that one thing overlaps another thing, overlaps another thing, overlaps another thing. That is one of the primary things that will give your image a sense of space, a sense of being there. This is the same if you're a photographer. What you're often looking for as you frame things is a good sense of overlapping shapes, of the sense of parallax, of one thing going in front of another thing. And it's just a fundamental part of picture making. And you can play with it here, even when we're just dealing with simple character and some type of prop or thing they're interacting with. Again, you can start really, really basic with this just by posing the character and putting a little bit of environment there. Um, or you can ratchet it up and make it really, really complicated. Or again, you can just start by, you know, thinking about your character as if they're posed and making sure that we think about where the different elements are overlapping each other and just practicing to make sure that you are considering the primary compositional ideas and, and experimenting with them. That is something that will help you build up. If you're just sort of sketching around in your sketchbook, let's say, just randomly drawing, you're not considering composition as it relates to a picture plane. And this is where we think about what are we actually painting this on? How's it going to appear in the final image? Obviously, for a comic book page, right, we have a single page that's kind of defined as a unit, but also we have the panel. And all of these are things that we consider compositional. And you can essentially do them you know, well or poorly or, or whatever. You, you can modify the composition to give certain emotional effects, let's say. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea about why this can be very simple, but still be very useful because you're starting to, even with a simple concept like this, you're starting to bridge and consider these really, really important elements of making pictures, even if what you're dealing with are things that are within your comfort zone. So keep that in mind the concepts and the feeling that you'll gain and the information that you'll acquire subconsciously by simply placing your character on a bit of paper and considering their composition and then maybe adding a few things to that, you're going to be building that muscle. You're going to be getting better and better and better at thinking about composition and how figures are placed and where the camera is and how to make them interact with things. And that will inform your drawing process as well. A huge part of what I talk about on this channel is figure drawing for all it's worth and, and other basic how to draw books. And the thing is that if you're just kind of sketching around, it doesn't really make sense to do a lot of this. But as soon as you need to kind of consider a picture, um, like a comic book panel or something like that, these become really, really valuable tools, almost invaluable tools. You kind of can't really do that type of drawing, um, not easily in a reliable way, I, I found, um, without understanding how to pose the figure with the little mannequin, uh, explore how they're interacting with something, how they're going to hold something, what their posture's like, etc., etc. So just by making them interact with a simple object, you gain a huge amount of information, but you're not kind of biting off more than you can chew and trying to create these heavily, heavily elaborate scenes.
But it's worth mentioning that, again, not every famous artist draws with these really, really complicated scenes. Again, you can probably create an entire comic book without doing a lot of that. Here we've got a Naruto book. And if you if you look, there's there's often some sort of cool effects and things like that. that there's a real sense of place and, and emotion. But the backgrounds themselves are very, very basic in, in most cases. Some scenes, you know, might have more than others. Again, there's a good sense of effects, but the actual backgrounds, if you look for them, are, are very, very basic. And in most cases, what we're dealing with is just an ability to make it clear where the characters are sitting, who's in front of who, and just sort of composing things so that we can actually read the emotions properly. You can also take an artist like Frazetta, who is a, a classic, well-regarded illustrator, and you can look at a lot of images such as, you know, this classic, the barbarian image, right? Um, again, cover to Conan the Adventurer. This is like the famous book that, um, you know, Frazetta did a cover for, and it kind of blew up and, you know, sort of took his career to new heights. It doesn't really have a foreground, middle ground, and background. It's essentially just a middle ground with a background that, yeah, is, is essentially just one color. Again, there's texture within those frames. There's a lot of depth within them. But if you were to sort of analyze it from a classical foreground, middle ground, background, what's the composition, etc., etc., it is essentially a black silhouette against a light background and the feeling and emotion he's able to gather through that is immense you can actually see the, the little thumbnail that, that sort of happened um you know it doesn't have this impact despite it maybe having more foreground middle ground background action and if you look at a lot of frazetta's images there's a similar theme here again there's good sense of depth within the image but there's often not a huge foreground element. You're just dealing with a graphic character and some sort of background that basically just places the, the, the feeling and the mood somewhat. And again, you see this again and again. But it doesn't mean that the images are simple or easy or anything like that. They're immensely sophisticated. It's just that they're very basic in, in, in the fundamental components. And there would obviously be um, covers and, and, and title elements to, to whatever sort of cover this, this was attached to that would actually add a lot of depth to it as well. But just remember, there's many, many different ways to create images. And um, not all of them involve uh, crazy foreground, middle ground, background. But if you're aspiring to do that, again, there's lots of good examples of places where that can happen. Again, this is uh, Siegfried by uh, Alex Elise. And you can see this is just full on amazing scene. There's foreground, middle ground, background for days. It's very well composed. Every frame is a little work of art. And a lot of it depends what you want to do. Where are you going? Certainly, drawing this type of art is going to require you to consider all of those concepts that I talked about in great detail versus if you're just looking at the Naruto scenes. But again, a lot of people prefer to look at Naruto because it has a great story and great emotional impact on the reader. Okay, so I've talked a little bit and I've hopefully warmed you up to the idea and given you some ideas for why I think this is important. And it's not just a really simple exercise, but a really, really important exercise. So what does this look like? Well, let's do a few little sketches. And again, you can see where I'm going based on the previous drawings that I've done there. But in most cases, all we're dealing with is just character plus prop. And this can be something that you experiment with or it can be something that you challenge yourself with, or it can be something where you just try and pick the easiest thing for you to draw so you can start experimenting. But you could, as I often do, simply take a character, and what we can try and do is just place them in a scene in some way, shape, or form. So you could have the idea of a character sitting down. So we just add one simple element. In this case, I'm going to use... Uh, Tim's generic rock idea here. But 
in this case, what we're doing is just thinking about the character sitting down. And in this case, again, I'm not going to use a crazy amount of perspective. I'm not going to do anything tricky. I'm just going to think about how do we start this process off? How do we get this thing going? So I'm going to use the, the R character that I often use for these sort of demos. We use the little little sorry in drawing brain in drawing uh, brain mode and then my my speech doesn't work. We use the little mannequin that I normally use for this, and in this case maybe she's just sitting here thinking, and she's got her sword. So again, this arm could be here. Maybe this arm is holding something. And maybe it could be that she's just opening the little backpack that she normally has. So in this case, I'm going to think about, yeah, what is the story going on here? We've got a character. She's just sitting down. Maybe she's just having a rest. Maybe she has taken off her cloak and her bag that she normally wears and she's getting some things out of it. So what we could do is we could have the cloak wrapped around here. Maybe it's sitting and draped over this rock. Now, these are all things that are going to be challenging from a drawing perspective. What we have to consider is what's happening on the ground plane. So in this case, we'd have this leg looks like it's probably behind this one. This one is going to be behind there. Right, we're getting a feel for what might be going on. And again, this is something where, you know, I might do a couple of versions of this to sketch around. We're going to use all of the tools and techniques that we would normally use when it comes to drawing, the things that make life easy. So we still have to consider and think about where is the ground plane. And the ground plane is just what we think of as, if we have our simple figure, the ground plane is just the plane or the grid, the object, the thing that the character or whatever we're drawing is sitting on, right? The, the thing that essentially you're sitting on as the viewer looking at the scene. And basically what we're doing is just thinking about what's in front of what. What have I got in front of what? What is going behind? Where are things placed in space? Now, these are all skills that you build over time. But as I said, you can build them here just with very, very simple exercises. And you can also play around with a lot of these complicated ideas that you're going to just have to repeat again and again if you draw a scene, such as where is someone positioned on the ground plane in terms of where are their feet, in terms of where are they sitting on the ground plane, Right, like if, if they were to cast a shadow down on the ground plane, where would that be? Where are the things that they're holding? So here we can just think about lots of ideas such as, well, if this foot is, is essentially if we were to view this from above, right? So here I've got the hips. Actually, let's, let's draw that from a different angle so it's less confusing. My apologies. So in this case, we've got hips. She's sitting on a rock. And we've got one leg going out here. And then it's kind of got a knee there. And then we've got one knee is kind of coming up maybe more like this. And then it's going back. And we've got a foot sitting on that rock. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, the other things we have to consider if we think about where the torso is, right, and where the 
where the shoulders are is where where's this sword so if we think about this sword maybe there's a shoulder here and then this comes forward bump bump and then it comes forward even more and that's the hand right and that's the hand that is holding the sword it means the sword is actually like and the, the sword is actually further back than what I've drawn it so these are really subtle ideas that obviously you can improve with perspective but if you start to train your brain to what spot these things and think about the idea of controlling that space and just sort of understanding well look this sword is hitting the ground here and if we look through forward in space we've got this bag she's holding right and the bag would be kind of maybe somewhere here and the sword is out there right and then got this this hand is obviously above that etc etc the head is kind of here somewhere hopefully that makes sense if not i'll do some more of these that are a lot sort of bigger and clearer but hopefully you you can sort of follow along and understand what i'm sort of thinking of now obviously you can actually draw this and it will help you to draw these plans yourself if you're sitting there wondering like how does this basic idea function uh, what is in front of what then just draw it from above i'm often thinking about it from above as i draw it here but it's these subtle concepts of just thinking about the space, right? Just thinking about, well, where is one thing versus another thing, right? If we think about it on a ground plane, right? Um, you know, depending on where these things are, they're, they're going to sort of cross over each other and be um, in different places relative to the camera up there. And it's just these subtle concepts that... Again, you don't need to understand a lot of perspective to, you know, start to engage this type of picture making. But it's training you to do all the right things and just taking on a little challenge like maybe the first thing you do is just say, look, let's just have a character and what I'm going to do is draw them just standing up. Again, little little sketch Often because little sketches are not as intimidating as big as big sketches. And the first thing to do is just maybe give them a pose, right? Like what are they what are they doing? Maybe they're holding on to something. This is where you can just use a prop and you could experiment by again having a staff or something. I, I always use fantasy examples when I'm doing these demos, but obviously if you're doing something hyper cartoony or if you're doing something science fiction based, it's the exact same concepts apply. So we could just, again, draw them there. And then the next thing you can do is say, hey, well, let's try and define where this ground plane is. Where are they actually standing? And let's place a few little environmental elements around and just try and see if we can feel out some space. And then what you might do next is sort of say, well, let's think about what the ground is going to be like. Maybe it's got some grass on it. Maybe it's got um, a little, you know, bush here. Right? Etc. Etc. And just ratchet up the complexity that way by drawing these things. If you do this and you keep it simple enough, the the thing is that you will be able to do this even without understanding a lot of perspective because there's just not as many things that can go wrong. As I always say, the more perspective you understand, the easier this will be to conceptualize and guesstimate. But the fundamental concept here is that, as I keep saying, you can learn everything you need to learn that will really help you when it comes to drawing larger, more complicated scenes from doing this. And this is the best way to start. The next thing you can do, as I said, is try and have the character interact or even better is to create the same scene but have something slightly different going on or try and compose a different angle of that same scene and see if you can compose it in an interesting way and think about it because the more you remember what's going on there, the better. So if I think about what's going on, right, we've got a rock 
sitting in the ground and then we've got a character sitting on the rock we've got let's think about where the ground plane is bump bump center line shoulders All right so if we've got the same thing happening you can play around with it right you can you can think about you know and you don't necessarily have to draw exactly the same one you can draw something that's a little bit a little bit different but and and optimize it for the composition that you're sort of drawing it from the the angle sorry uh, that will affect the composition you can certainly do that but yeah there's a, there's plenty of room to experiment just pick the same thing obviously then you would build it up and and make more and more out of it but again we think about what's happening on that ground plane where is this right it's going to be somewhere over here right we're going to have the character maybe again they can be holding a staff or something like that just sitting down and this other one can be boom boom all right maybe something like that and maybe in this case we can draw the little pack or whatever is on the ground there boom again maybe just start to play maybe they've taken out their little water bottle they're uh, taking a drink there give that water bottle some um some little straps and we'll lay them on the ground again i'm doing this really simply but it's often these little details that if you can just add to your bigger scenes they'll make it feel more real and like there's life there and it's it's often just this little going through thinking about where the space is thinking about where the overlaps are so a good example of how you can experiment with overlaps is to think about well yeah in this case maybe let's keep those uh, and again I've, I've drawn this rib cage is probably not 100 percent properly placed if i was to go and do more passes on this i'd keep cleaning it up all right keep cleaning it up think about where her head is boom got ears horns all right eye patch so let's keep that cape on all right keep that cape on and let's drape it over the back and think about where it's going to add some dimensionality so in this case I'm going to have it sort of draping over her arm like that and falling down. And in this case, it's going to go over the shoulder and fall down. And again, what's this this is doing is, is allowing us to practice those ideas of building overlap into our scenes. And believe it or not, it's for, for me, it's often these little bits and pieces that really helped me to bridge that gap because it did take me a long time to get good at this and it was those first steps of just drawing little characters because as you can see all we have to do from a practical standpoint is just keep adding stuff now the more stuff you add the more complexity there is the more you need to think about how composition works, etc., etc. These things here that I've sort of talked about are more of like a vignette style illustration. We can think about them as being like that Frazetta image. It's just a flat image and we can sort of, you know, you can render it, you can paint it, you, you can put some, some cool little indications of foliage or whatever but essentially it just sort of fades out and acts as a very very solid shape against a, a, a white background and this will give you typically a, a nice sort of compositional set of shapes and it also helps you to practice focusing on the shapes that characters make but just understand that again once you are getting good at this the next thing you can do is start to say hey let's try an experiment with where I could put a background and this is where you can either if you're in Photoshop or digital program you can just make a new layer and experiment 
or if you're doing this with pencil and you've gotten to the point where you're good at this, you can ruin a few of them by just trying to do something like, hey, let's put in a, you know, a tree in the background here. All right, let's add some stuff there. All right, got a tree here. Again, drawing trees would require some understanding of perspective, right? We've got our ellipses. Uh, this is a lot easier said than done. As with all these things, the first time I tried to do something like, oh, just add a tree there, it turned out really badly. Um, but what you have to understand is it's a good way to experiment. So the more I can experiment, the more I can think about composition and maybe adding some extra stuff and trying to consider those other elements. Now, obviously, the more you potentially plan this as a thumbnail, which is a concept you can learn about in the quick start guide, right? So if, if you really sort of thought about, okay, I've got this character here and right, they're kind of sitting down and maybe I want like a big tree behind them or maybe I want a mountain behind them. What, whatever it is that you're thinking about that will really impact that overall composition, it's really good to plan that ahead. The more you plan this, the better it will turn out. But you're still practicing skills here by just kind of progressively adding stuff that will make the whole process less intimidating. The biggest thing here that I want you to get, take away is just this doesn't have to be intimidating. This doesn't have to be something where you feel like you've got to get it all working sort of uh, before you start. It is an iterative process, right? The more you do this, the more you think about how to add foreground, middle ground, background by just experimenting with it and seeing how it goes, the easier these things will be. Again, it doesn't have to be a big series of lessons or something that you have to take on all at once and then produce as your finished product an amazing uh, polished illustration with a whole bunch of characters uh, walking around it. Again, the way that I built up to doing that was by doing this. And the other thing, again, just keep in mind, as I was saying before, that frequently illustrators just do this. This is kind of all they do and they make an entire career out of just building little scenes, little vignettes and stuff like that. And just get really, really good at making them look awesome, feel awesome and, you know, getting a sense of story and adventure through that. So anyway, hopefully that's enough to give you a little taste for how this works. There's obviously, as I said, a large proportion of theory that will make your ability to produce an amazing illustration really good, okay? It's, it's kind of easy to create an okay illustration to kind of put a background in there and say, oh, there's a tree there. Okay, I get it. You know, maybe that worked for a composition, right? Maybe that'll work for, you know, like a, a little comic panel, right? Blah, blah, blah. But if you're thinking about trying to, you know, make one of the best illustrations that's ever been created in the history of, um, of humankind, you're probably going to need to plan it. You're probably going to need to think about it a lot more. And you're probably going to need to practice the concept of building compositions as thumbnails that I talk about in that quick start guide and then progressing it through a process that's reliable. But as I said, doing this will take a lot of the fear out of that process and give you confidence to play an experiment. And I think this is the first step that helped me and hopefully it's something that can help you. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. Let me know in the comments whether this was helpful, whether you've got any other questions, things you'd like to see in the next series of videos that I make talking a little bit more about scenes and composition. But apart from that, that's all I got for this one. Catch you around. Happy drawing.